Issue 190. Scourge starts the story out kicking Song, telling him that being a king makes him the superior. It reminds Song about what he said to him, that all it would take for either of them would be to lean a little in another direction and they'd be the same guy in the end. Sonic's still getting attacked effortlessly because I guess he's not as fast as him anymore. He's surprised that Scourge was actually listening to him, even though Scourge clearly looked worried after he said that. Scourge admits that it made sense, but then he says that if Sonic's a hero Mobius, what does that make him? So then Scourge reveals that he conquered Anti-Mobius in a matter of days. One, I'm not going to call it his silly excuse for a new name, because I'm sure Mobius is pronounced exactly the same way as Mobius. So way to go, Scourge, giving it a new name that's even less original than the old one. And two, I'm really surprised it took him days. Wouldn't it just be a matter of warping to the right places and beating the right people up? That'd be hours, or seconds, not days. And I'd like to point out that Miles is facing away from Sonic being beaten up instead of watching it, enjoying it. He explains that he tries to make his world distinct, insisting, we're not just evil twins anymore. And we had to prove that by acting exactly like an evil twin would. It's like he sees it more as a synonym for pathetic. Sonic then replies by calling Scourge a dork for some reason, and confidently boasting that the Freedom Fighters will win in the end. Then Nicole asks Rotor if his neck is bothering him again, and Rotor says no, but then says that for once he's glad it sidelined him by keeping him out of the fight. First of all, I thought it was his back that was hurt, not his neck. I thought when I reached this point in the comic that this would make more sense, but instead it seems to come out of nowhere because while we did see Rotor laid up from taking the boulder to the back when we first saw him in the Nanite City, the whole his back was hurt thing was really, really not focused on after that, so I thought it was completely resolved. Miles says to Tails that he's ignored his magical heritage and is best friends with his version of Sonic, and because of that he says, you make me sick! This is really confusing, because how the hell would he know that he has magical heritage? The biggest missed opportunity with Miles is he never uses magic. That would be the perfect way to contrast him from Tails. Have him be more of a wizard like Merlin, while Tails focuses more on engineering. And some fans actually take that interpretation. But instead, he just uses the exact same powers as Tails does. Unless he knows he has those powers, he doesn't use them because he doesn't think he's good enough at them, or couldn't be non-lethal with them. How would he know that he has magical heritage? And why would he care? Why would he be upset with Tails for not using his magical powers more instead of being thankful and smug, seeing it as proof that he's better? Wouldn't he want Tails to not reach his full potential? Instead of being disappointed in someone he shouldn't care about at all? He's, he's acting like he wants him to be better. And him thinking Tails being best friends with Sonic is bad isn't explained either. What's his problem with that? What, is he jealous? Plus he says that he follows him around like a pup. And the only reason he'd think that was a trait specifically associated with little kids like that is if he was that way himself when he was a cub. And I'd also love to point out just how ironic it is for the supposedly arrogant suck-up snob that when faced with someone who reminds him so much of himself, he says, you make me sick, to what's basically his own reflection in the mirror. I mean, that's a little over the top, isn't it? You could just say that he annoys him, or he's irritated by him, but it's said to go that far. Patch compares Antron to his father for some reason, I guess to subtly imply that he's out to kill him too, but it's not like he's gonna poison him. And Bunny angrily calls Boomer out on making himself a cyborg on purpose, acting as if being a cyborg is the worstest thing ever, and becoming one yourself is evil, when she owes her entire competence to it. I mean, the cyborg angst is the only thing interesting about her character, but it doesn't even make sense. Boomer says that he'd do anything to claw his way out of obscurity. He actually admitted he was in obscurity to begin with? And Fiona basically replies to Amy saying she betrayed her own world, that she might as well do that too, she had nothing to lose. I mean, that's true, she basically betrayed her friends, might as well do that too, why not? And she's on the other team. Sally's polite enough to apologize to Sonic for calling him back from his mission with the Chaotix, and Sonic naturally says that she doesn't have to apologize at all. He then spin dashes into Alicia, which somehow doesn't cut her from sharp spines and kill her, not even cutting her clothes. Meanwhile, as I wonder why Scourge isn't attacking Sonic, so Sonic had the time to attack Alicia in the first place, 
Dimitri asks Knuckles why he can't just be content with the damage he already did to Eggman City. Wait, with the Dark Egg Legion, does that mean his city isn't a ghost town anymore because the Dark Legionnaires are living there as citizens? I mean, we don't really see where they live. We don't see them living in any houses. Leanda and Dimitri are then reasonable enough to admit that it's not Knuckles' fault he's been sent here by the Republic of Acorn. When Julie calls Dimitri out on arbitrarily siding with Eggman, once again not explaining why he should recognize that as a mistake, Dimitri just says that his people have been fighting with the other cannons for too long, and orders the lasers to fire. After Scourge gets hit by Sonic back into the Glowpost portal that wasn't closed by now for some reason, Fiona gets him back right away, calling him Hun and asking what he wants the team to do. Scourge then snaps at her because he almost got sent back home, probably only acting like that from being extremely stressed out because he was terrified that he'd be trapped there forever, thus ruining his plan. Um, hello? You have a warp ring from Dr. Phytitibus. Why did he care? Did he just destroy it? He could just warp right back! He threatens his team that they do not want to be stuck back in anti mobius with him, and that gets them looking sympathetically scared for once before immediately going back to fighting for him. I figure since his so-called friends don't have a history of liking him anyways, he probably gave up on them. Gave up on trying to be nice to them and stuff, so might as well control them literally the only way he otherwise can. Nicole says sadly that she can't get through to the Chaotix for some reason, and for some reason she has to tell Rotor that he needs to get to safety when he's injured, reminding him that he has his duty to the Acorn Council, even though they could replace him. Rotor agrees, looking sad, to keep an eye on the team he's so worried about as she looks like a news reporter on the screen. Fiona says that Boomer's lame double is running! and Tails kicks Miles in the head before he could stop him. Then, despite a whip being tied around her wrist, Sally just taunts Alicia about her not being in charge anymore, not being intimidated. Bunny briefly wastes a few panels trying to convince Antoine not to focus on getting his revenge on Patch, even though she herself expressed a desire to have revenge on Patch. Miles then unnecessarily says that Boomer will see to it that Antoine's heart is not in the right place and is making a mistake by focusing on Patch. Even though what Bonnie clearly meant was that Antoine wasn't acting evil by wanting revenge, and Miles is contradicting her on that. He didn't have to be the one to say anything, and Patch taunts him about the idea that he has to fight him, while Miles looks not exactly happy to be in this situation, with his eyes downcast and his arms crossed. Why isn't he smirking? He used to smirk all the time in his last appearance, now he just looks like he's sick of life. I wonder if that's supposed to mean something. Boomer deadpans the patch to cut the melodrama and get on with it, even though that wasn't melodrama, he was just taunting him like any rival would. After I guess Sonic attacked both of them, which is pretty pointless to attack Miles when he was just flying in the air not doing anything, Scourge immediately spin dashes at him, also not killing him with the sharp spines for some reason, and considering Sonic just hurt his little brother, I can't say I blame him. Scourge shows exasperation that Sonic still hasn't shown him the respect he really wants from him and kneeled to him, when you'd think being shown respect by his goody two-shoes twin would embarrass him from his approval. And when Amy tries to stand up to him, Scourge kicks the hammer out of her hand while saying, And I don't need to deal with another one of you! Considering what a pain Rosie's been to him, I can't blame him for snapping like this at her. He gets tripped by Sonic, cursing from it, well, the Dark Egg Legion gets attacked by the Chaotix, and Julie calls Saffron, telling her she's clear. She escapes the exploding building with Charmian Ray, and Leonda tells the Legion to escape to the inner city. Knuckles again lampshades why Dimitri's doing this since he's a scientist, not a general. Then Dimitri says in response to them, You make it sound like I'm purposefully weakening the greatest evil this world has ever known from within. I hope he is, and his smirk implies that that's the truth. For some reason, Vector just assumes he went crazy when he spelled out pretty clearly to everyone what he's doing. Okay, that justifies it then. Now it kinda makes sense. We see a panel of everyone fighting with Amy trying to hit Miles in the air with a hammer, somehow not just curve stopping him as she keeps missing. I guess he could fly all the way really quickly. And Tails admits that they've got the match blow for blow, which is especially strange since it directly contradicts last time, when all they had to do was change who they were fighting and they'd win. But here it's implied that the evil twins are just better at fighting in general, which is very weird since they don't have years of combat experience fighting robots with their full strength. I mean, Rotor's not there to overwhelm Miles like last time, but other than that, it should be exactly the same. 
Why can't they just switch partners to the like, same partners that they had last time and win? Sally tells her friends to fall back to the common room, whatever that is, and asks Bunny to buy them some time, and she sees to create an electricity barrier keeping the evil twins in, as Sally reveals that they're leaving Freedom HQ behind. Bunny doesn't really have any clearly defined powers, I mean, her force field ability came out of nowhere, this comes out of nowhere. I mean, it all makes sense that Rotor would give her those powers, but it just, it always seems to show up out of nowhere with no buildup. I mean, again, it, it makes a lot more sense than Sonic turning intangible for no reason. Boomer immediately gets rid of the force field, and the heroes run away, being allowed to do that instead of Scourge just continuing the fight running after them. You'd think if he hated Sonic so much, he would just run after him himself and kill them all to spite Sonic. And if he's so arrogant, you'd think the idea that he'd be outnumbered wouldn't even occur to him to stop him from doing that. Instead, he just stays put and generously lets them leave. That was odd, and they don't even point that out. This issue is by Ian Flynn and involves the evil twins taking over Freedom HQ even after the heroes tried the same strategy that worked last time of switching who they were fighting with. And they don't even lampshade the fact that it doesn't work this time. It's like it's trying to imply the evil twins are all stronger individually when they don't have years of experience fighting with robots at their full potential. Also, Charmy, Saffron, and Ray get out of the communication tower destroying it one piece, so that's good. But for the most part, that Knuckles side story is a complete waste of time until we finally get confirmation on why Dimitri is doing this. His justification for working for Eggman is that he's purposefully weakening him from the inside. I guess he also has plans to make the Dark Legion take Eggman's place. So again, he's doing everything for his people. At least there is justification, but it's still weird that he's working with Eggman. Not much to say since the entire story was about one fight over one cave. Miles looks completely sick of life. Scourge panics and snaps at almost getting sent home for some reason when he should have had no problem warping back with either the warp ring or the glow post back home, which they didn't exactly break themselves after using them. Not to mention the portal shouldn't have been open for him to be sent into it anyways, unless Sonic activated it himself. And eventually, Sally retreats from the base, and Scourge for some reason lets them all leave instead of going after them to keep the fight up like would be expected of him, and not point out how weird that decision of his was. This issue... maybe it wasn't written all that well, but at least the evil twins show up. No, no, I always like seeing them around at least. 